Hello guys, today I'll be talking about a novel that um, is not really my journey, like it's not exactly my thing, but I just kind of like came across it and I feel like doing a review of it. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, I'm still your favorite literary critic, Mazida. If this is your first time here, you're welcome. What I literally do is to provide detailed book reviews of your favorite African literature within 10 minutes so you don't have to like, you know, lose your attention. And rest assured that if you're watching my video, you're going to be getting like the most important information on that book. If this is your first time here, please like my videos, share my videos and turn on your post notifications so you can notify when I drop new videos. Today, I'll be talking about The Perfect Learning by Leila Slimani. It's, she's a French Moroccan writer, which you know also makes an African writer, which also makes it a jury. The book is actually, um, a, it's, it was written after a real life story which, was, which happened in 2012. It was the mother of two children by their nanny, Lucy. If I got the name right, Lucy and Leo Cream. Like their nanny seemed perfect, but at the end of the day, she like kind of ended up murdering the children. I think this was the story that in, that intrigued Lila Slimani. I moved her to write her own book. It was published by Penguin Books in 2016. And just to give a brief synopsis of what the book is actually about, it's actually about a perfect nanny. Yes, how the title actually says, The nanny seems perfect. But I mean, anybody who reads it, who understand that um, there's something on the line in her that, that she doesn't share with anybody. So she seems perfect on the outside. And because she's like perfect, like these two couples need her help because she was highly recommended from, you know, like all that friends who, who students are taking care of. But the nanny came to live with them, their life was deteriorating because the wife felt like she wanted more out of life. But because of the two children that she has, she felt weighed down by the, the heavy grab of motherhood. And they started looking for a nanny. Then when Louis, the name of the nanny, came to live with them, everything just became very spectacular. And she was willing to do her job more than her job. And even what didn't send her. So it, it was like a dream come true for the for Miriam and Paul, the couple. And the children also loved the nanny so much. Um, that is uh, Mila and Adam. They were really into her because she, I mean, she, she was like a child herself. She embodied like this, um, surveilled leaf kind of look and she can like imitate animals. Tell stories in really interesting ways that they were really obsessed by the land. The parents were hardly ever at home because they were really into their career and they, they just depended so much on Louis that they, they felt like Louis is there, nothing is going to happen. The writer, Lila Slimani, one thing she really did that was amazing was that, in as much as um, we were, we, she was trying to describe the perfect nanny, she, she wrote it in a kind of way that you can tell that this nanny is actually not perfect. In fact, she, she's, not, she's not close to being perfect. It's like, like a psychopath looking very good on the outside, but on the inside, it's all. I mean, it is deteriorating very quickly. And one thing that really went on with Louis was that she, she, she was really alone and she just wanted to spend time with people. And because she was a widow and she was an immigrant, she, she had no family, a husband that died, she had a tyrant of herself, Stephanie, and Stephanie ran away from home. So it was really only her, she was, she was living in this, in this really bad apartment where the shower had already collapsed. But when she got the job to look after Mila and Adam, she was very excited. And that was where she was spending most of her time. She would resume around 7 30, close to the night when the parents come home. She would do the dishes, wash the sheets. I mean, she had access into their private lives, and then she was the only thing holding that house together. Every time when they went on holidays, they usually take Louis along with them because they just went like, ah, oh, come on, Louis' family, let's just take her along. And so that was how they got more um, intertwined with this nanny. And she used to make the children do things that were awful. She's kind of very finicky and she she feels bad about usage of food. So those particular day, she didn't come because she felt sick and then Miriam, the mother, actually threw away like a bag of food because she felt like, ah, it's no longer good, let me just throw it away. And then the next day, when Louis came to work, she actually went to the dustbin, like she took the carcass of the meat that the mother threw away. And I think she washed it 
and made the children actually eat. It's like she made them pick at every flesh that was on the bone. And then she left she left the bone right there on the table for the parents to come back and eat. I mean that was also a bit the breaking point if the parents were really like interested in something else about their career. But then when Miriam told Paul her husband about it, Paul was I mean he was like a nice girl, it was very very indifferent. Just finished school so quickly because the next thing that the director told us was that the place were all over their houses and then the two children were already dead. Okay, one was dead, they were rushing the other one to the hospital, but the other one was also soon going to die. The child was not going to survive. So it was like one moment you are reading about the way being perfect nanny and then the other moment you are reading about the dead children. Like how oh, where's the correlation? Like I didn't really get. So that was like basically what the book was about. Uh first to talk about the theme. I think the thing that was actually very prevalent in the book was it was just loneliness. Now, I don't really know exactly who to blame for the loneliness. Was it Louis? Was it like the situation of things in the country that could not let us socialize with other people in other like classes, like the higher or the middle class? So, what, was it really Louis' fault that she was lonely and that she had nobody? But if you actually ask me, I would not say that it was anybody's fault that Louis was lonely. I mean, she works with amazing people, fantastic bosses who really likes her because she, she just did a book very well. But she was not willing to open up to them. In fact, she was not willing to open up to other nannies that she met at the park when she took, when she took the children for walks. She was just feeling inside herself. And because she, she was refusing to say anything to anybody, the situation inside her quickly deteriorated. It was it was really bad. I mean, she she was slowly losing it. It was like a degenerative disease, but it wasn't a disease. So like a mental illness, really. Mental illness just a disease. <laughs> To me, the most prevalent theme is the theme of loneliness. Although we can see other themes like class difference, but wasn't as prevalent as the theme of loneliness. I think what the last thing Manu was trying to do show, was that she was trying to show us how an individual can be, not exactly how the society can be. She was taking us into a journey of um, how Louis, the nanny, how our mind actually works, and the things that might cause an individual to actually break down. I know something that is not meant to me. Because Louis really loved the children, she she would never have hanged them. But because of because of the mental, the psychological state that she was in, she she could, she really could not help herself. And she just I think she she actually even murdered them with a knife, a knife that was really sharp that they had at home. And then they arrested her, and then she slipped into a coma. She did not want to wake up. That's the story I think the thing is about. The composition of the book is actually really interesting. Even though they were not like chronological like that, the author still made us relate one incident to the other. And she brought out past memories of Louis to help us understand why she was like that and to help us understand the story better. I really hope that you enjoyed this short but detailed review. And if you have anything to say, this is, I mean, this is really be interactive. If you have anything to say, do not hesitate to post it in the comment section below. I'll be happy to hear your thoughts and I'll be happy to respond. See you in my next video. Bye. Okay.